Let's move on to Michigan. Let's talk about what's happening there. Uh, Miami hired offensive coordinator Josh Gaddis, who won the Broyles Award last year as the Michigan offensive coordinator. Uh, this is interesting. Now, Miami also hired Kevin Steele, which, you know, obviously we just brought that up. But we're going to focus on Gaddis on this. Kevin Steele had already started at Maryland and then took this job. Uh, let me let me read off the text message that was read to... Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. I had it pulled up, and now I don't. Um, so, so Josh Gaddis left, and he... He told the players that he was not, uh, basically he was not wanted at Michigan, which is interesting, right? This was the text. Uh, Unfortunately, the past few weeks has told a different story to me about the very little appreciation I have here from administration. In life, I would never advise anyone to be where they are not wanted. Now, what this says to me is Josh Gaddis, who is 38 years old. This is his first offensive coordinator job. Uh, they told him, basically, if Harbaugh leaves, you are not going to be the head coach. Like, we appreciate the interest, but we are going to go a different direction. Gaddis has done this before, right? He and Mike Loxley got into this huge argument back and forth when he got the Michigan OC job about how he was actually the brains behind the offense at Alabama back in 2018, the ones that got demolished by Clemson and and had huge record-setting numbers and all that kind of mess, right? It's interesting to see that he would come out and actually vent this to the players before heading to Miami. I think we would all say that Miami is a lateral move. Would would you consider that going to work for for Mario Cristobal? Mm -hmm. Miami is not near the program Michigan is. One thing just went to the playoffs. The other team's not close to even. I mean, they're struggling to have a winning record. Agreed, agreed. So yeah, now they do have a head coach or a new head coach. They've got obviously there's a ton of talent around there, et cetera. Josh Gaddis is a proven recruiter. Uh, do you think that Gaddis should have been in line to be the next head coach of Michigan? No, <laughs> me either. Not even close. <laughs> like this is a guy. This is a guy that just thinks he's worth so much more than he is. And he might make a one day a, a, an amazing head coach. Okay? Yeah. And he's been a good OC. And that's fun. But this guy's resume, like, there are certain jobs in the country that if you've never been a head coach before, if you have no head coaching experience, you're not getting that job. Now, I know Notre Dame just broke that rule. Okay, Notre Dame, first time, but, but there, was, there are several schools throughout the country, that if you've never been a head coach, you're, you're not learning on the job here, baby. All right? And Michigan is 100% one of those jobs. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I did find it. Right or wrong, good or bad, doesn't matter. That, that's their rule. Yes. And here's the thing. I don't even think it's that. Because they, they were, there's a chance that they would have hired somebody who's not a his, his no head coaching experience. And so that would have made my, my argument look like foolishness but there's a lot of people around michigan that believe the quarterback coach hart is the brains behind that offensive operation now i I don't know if that's true or not but i know the administration believes that if gaddis took that as an insult i don't i don't know what to tell you like is it okay for me to appreciate what you've done but also not think you're the best guy for the next step because Because those two things aren't mutually exclusive. Like, I can totally be grateful for the work that you're doing and that you've been a part of here, but also not want you to be my head coach. How how are those two things, like, how is one of those an insult? See, I don't think it's an insult. And yet, I think he took it that way. Uh, That offense clearly changed. And and the guy you're talking about is Matt Weiss. Uh, Mike Hart is the running backs coach, but... Yeah, he. That's a heart was the running backs coach. Yeah. I got him confused, but yeah, uh, it's white. It was white. Yes, uh, Matt Weiss is uh, the quarterbacks coach. He was the running backs coach for the Baltimore Ravens up until this past season, and that offense obviously changed when he showed up. And yes. you know, I, Gaddis was learning on the job. He had never been an OC before Jim Harbaugh gave him that call. He was the wide receivers coach and the quote unquote co offensive coordinator at Alabama. Uh, I think everybody understands Mike Loxley was the play caller. He was the offensive coordinator. 
But Gaddis was a recruiter, a wide receivers coach, and a co-offensive coordinator. He helped put together the game plans. Uh, but I think everybody kind of helps put together the offensive game plans. So, uh, you know, Gaddis learned on the job under Harbaugh and, and with this guy. And the offense got better. And I don't know that that means that he should have been uh, given a shot to be a head coach right now. Uh, for him to come out and say this, it's interesting he brought up the administration and and didn't say anything about Harbaugh because I think he appreciates Harbaugh giving him that call. But, but to be 38 years old and irritated that you that you weren't wanted as the Michigan OC or Michigan uh, head coach, it seems a little strange to me. So I I think he'll do great down at Miami. I'm I'm sure he'll be perfectly fine with what Mario Cristobal wants to run, and I think he's going to be a hell of a recruiter. But to leave that way and and to tell the players that was definitely a move. I mean, de- definitely uh, not not something that maybe I would have done, but uh, I, I found it strange. Did uh, did you kind of feel the same way there? Well, I thought it was very unprofessional. Like I, I thought it was childish. And I thought it was unprofessional. Um, the the other thing I think is that I, I know everybody in the world just thinks Mario Cristobal is God's gift to football, and he's going to be the second coming of Nicholas Saban. But but I just don't. I don't see that. I watched him at Oregon every year. Oregon was good. Oregon was never great. They didn't scare anybody. And he just hired two coordinators that I don't think are that great. All right. Now, I'm sure Gaddis is really good, but everybody at Alabama thought that the other guy was more important. Everybody at Michigan thought the other guy was more important than him. So now you have two pieces of information that say he's here, but he's never been the most important person to our offense. Okay. And then I don't think Kevin Steele's very good at all. So, like, that's, that's my opinion of these guys. I don't know why people just assume Cristobal is just this locked, slam dunk, great coach. And everything at Miami is going to come up roses. Maybe it is. Maybe they, they win the whole fucking thing next year and I look like a moron. I, I just don't see that. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what everybody else sees. I, I mean, I know the guy fills out a medium t-shirt really well. But... But what did we see at Oregon that says Crystal Ball is amazing? Uh, there's, there's not much. I mean, he recruited at a high, high level at Oregon. Uh, that's, all right, that's all right. Pretty so we talked about getting guys in. Okay, yeah. now what do he do with them? Uh, not much, not much. Okay. So I, I am curious. Now, I mean, you're to talking see. about a shitty conference in the Pac-12 compared to the rest of the boys. All right. Oh yeah. Right? He he, Let's he be won it twice. What the Pac-12 has like, been like in the last three years. That's okay. he, he won it two of the last three. He did not win it this year, but uh, they got just demolished, absolutely demolished by Utah. Uh, but they did go on the road. They beat Ohio State. They they had some impressive wins. Okay, he's got he's got one marquee win in his entire time at Oregon. One, and it's a hell of a win. Don't get me wrong. I'm not taking that away from him. But man, I don't know how I'm supposed to draw an entire career off of that. Oh, no, I don't think you are. I mean, Carson Wentz had a good six months of his life where people thought he was the best football, you know, quarterback <laughs> in the history of football. And and after that six months, we, we've never seen that guy again. True. I mean, this dude had one great Saturday. He's going to make a career off of it? <laughs> like I said, that might be real, and I'm wrong on this. But I don't I don't like Kevin Steele. I don't know why people keep hire him. I don't think he's a great defensive coordinator. Uh, Auburn defenses want to make him the head coach. I think they're dead ass wrong. I think that would be the dumbest thing to possibly do. Uh, he'll, he'll come cheap. That'll help you. Um, but that's it. That's the list. And, well, and so with Gattis, at, I think at Auburn, I, I think the main reason is because he'll do what they want him to do. Right? But here, hang on. You keep using they when you talk about the boosters, but you're assuming that all of the boosters agree on how things should be ran. The whole problem that we have right now with Harson is, is none of them agree on any of it. So why do we? So why are you using this collective they? They don't don't have a thought because they don't agree on anything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can I can see where you're coming from with that. I think the majority of them are more aligned on this than you would think. Uh, I, I, so we disagree completely on that because I've followed this. I've watched a lot of these things. I've talked to interact with some of these people. I I, I disagree completely on that. 
Okay. Because I, okay. I, I'm telling you that I think the majority, now I don't have any big swing and dicks that, that write checks, but the majority of fans that I know down in Auburn, and I know a lot of them, all want Harson. They're not thrilled with Harson, but they want to give him three years. Yeah, no, okay? that makes perfect sense. Right. That's, so, that's and a logical I, and I don't think some of those guys are connected to a lot of the boosters, and and they think we got to give him three years. We want to give him three years. That, they're not displeased with the with the 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 hire or the uh, with the athletic director, but some of them are. So okay, well, some of them are. Now, who wins out in this? I don't know. I yeah. don't know how you do that. But but to say the boosters want him gone, well, some of them do. Sure. That makes sense. Some of them yeah. wanted Ed gone 2018. Didn't want him there at all. Okay. Well, 2019, he put together the greatest season of all time. So, like, <laughs> like was he a good coach? No. But but without him, we don't get this either. So True. True. Uh, so, so, going back to Michigan, you lose your defensive coordinator. I don't think that's a lateral move. I think going to be a D.C. in the NFL is – the step that he wanted to take, right? Uh, Not close to a lateral move. This guy came exactly. from the NFL, and he went back to the NFL. Exactly. Exactly. He was a linebacker's coach, came to be a D.C. That's in right. college, and this this has been a step up in, in every way, uh, every yeah. every step forward for him. So that makes sense. Absolutely. For Josh Gaddis, uh, this was, at best, a lateral move and uh, was – just very interesting. I would imagine that Weiss ends up becoming the offensive coordinator. We'll see what happens there. But uh, do you think that all of this just kind of fell apart on Harbaugh? Uh, you know, he told his assistants, hey, I'm going to be interviewing for an NFL job. You guys might want to interview elsewhere. Should we look at this as, you know, maybe Harbaugh didn't expect to be back in this situation, and now he's going to have to kind of rebuild this? No, I don't think any of that happened. I think Gaddis got his feelings hurt. I think if Harbaugh would have gotten an NFL job, the DC would have went with him. He went to his brother, like because he wanted to be back in the NFL. That's all that is. So it's a, those are the only two moving parts there are there. That's it. That's the it. Two guys left that weren't there anymore. One of them got his feelings hurt. The other one took a promotion and wanted out of college. He wanted back in the pros. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're uh, you're right. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.